want to talk about Facebook timeline, or more appropriately, how to win the game and not lose the plot. Facebook's timeline is a new initiative that they rolled out about a month and a half, two months ago, and it's revolutionising revolutionizing, um, the way that you can market your business and your, your firm online. Um, let's have a look at some of the details uh, and background as to why it's so important. Today's web, today's social web is image driven. It's driven by images. The fastest growing social network in the world is a network called Pinterest. And if you've never been to, if you've never heard of or been to Pinterest, go to Pinterest.com. It's an online pin board where you pin up images that appeal to you, and you can put them into different categories, and you can follow other people's pins. It is the fastest growing social network in the world. It is now number three. Came out of nowhere. It is phenomenal. The predominant people who, or the, the primary group of people who, who are on Pinterest and who get into Pinterest in a major way are women. So it's predominantly women that you're going to find at Pinterest. But it underpins and under, under, underlies the fact that it's now a social web. It is an image-driven web. Google Plus is another social network which is very image-driven. There are loads and loads of photographers on Google Plus, amateur photographers like me, who put up their photos and other people comment on them and they say that's a load of rubbish, have you think about doing it this way? And, but it's all image-driven. Google, Google Plus is a very image-driven social network. But Pinterest is the big one. I, I suggest strongly that you go and have a look at Pinterest and the women in the audience here will go there and you'll probably become hooked as just loads and loads of other women are. It's fantastic. Have you been to Pinterest? It is addictive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just you can go for Pinterest. It's like when the web first started, when the, with the World Wide Web very first started, and you went to a web page, and then that led you to another web page, and it led you to another page, and you sort of like you know came home from work and you sat down. I'll just be on the computer five minutes, darling. Meanwhile, your tea's gone cold as you're you know in your hundredth website that you're visiting. It's just such a time suck. It's brilliant, brilliant site. So many images there. But that's where, the, that's where the web is now, with visual imagery. So it's not about text anymore. Text is important for search engine optimization. But the big way of getting people's attention is through images. OK, here's an image. This is actually a photo I took. So I've got the rights to stick it up there. But this is a photo I took. People are drawn to an image. But what's interesting is that Facebook did an internal survey, an internal study, looking at how long people interact with stuff. You are two times more likely to have engagement if you stick an image up there than if you just stick text in your status update. That's how important having an image is. Minimum of two times. Okay. So, it's important that when you're going onto Facebook as, on, on a business page, you've set up a, a business page on Facebook, and you're interacting with the timeline, it's important that you use images. Can't stress that enough. Here's, here's a, um, a uh, financial... Uh, financial services company, Foster and Blanchard, actually based in Adelaide. Um, they uh, are using this Shirley Ferris there. They have a, a, um, a cover, what's called a cover image, which is this big long one, uh, and then a profile pic, which is this little sort of, it's supposed to be square, but the, um, the projector's squashed things, but it's supposed to be square. So, uh, and, and what, they, what Foster and Blanchard have done is they've talked about what they do in their business. So home loans and investment loan advice, credit to advisor, mortgage broking, property purchases and pre-approvals, all the sort of stuff that they handle, they put. So when you go to their page, the first thing you see is, is an interesting, interesting picture, a picture of an attractive person, right, with what they do in their business, right? That's important. And it's, that's, that's good work. Now, write down, because you're going to need to take notes on this, write down, when you go to create a cover image for your own business, it needs to be this size. It needs to be 851 pixels by 315 pixels. That's the size image. So if you're doing it yourself, or you're getting someone in your family to create an image for you, or you're getting an outside consultancy to do it, the outside consultancy should know this stuff. If they don't, then you have to question why you're asking them to do it. But that's the size image that you should be going for, an 851 by 315 pixels. And then the, the coverage. Remember, remember she had the big long banner, but there's also what's supposed to be a square image as well, 
right? That's very important. That's the logo. That's the profile pic. And that's 180 by 180 square. Now, what they've done is have a, that photo of, of that, uh, that attractive woman there, one of their brokers, I guess, uh, and it's, it's there on their page. But when you shrink it down to 32 by 32 pixels, which is what it shrinks down to in, some, in someone's timeline, if they've liked your business page, uh, and so you, you put up a status update on your business page, and it shows up in their timeline, in their news feed, right? it's only going to be 32 by 32 pixels. It's quite small. So having a photo of someone is not necessarily the best thing because it comes very squished up and it's hard to differentiate it, especially that one because that one's just black and white. So it makes it even harder. So a great idea is to use the logo of your business. If you have an uncomplicated logo, use the logo of your business in that, that uh, little 180 by 180 square because when it shrinks down to 32 by 32, it's still legible. If you don't have a logo for your business, I strongly suggest you get one. And it's very easy to get. You go to Google, free logos. You type in free logos into Google, and there'll come in loads of sites where you can go and create your own logo. Dead simple. But a really, a really simple, easy to see logo that shrinks down nicely to 32, which is only a small size. It's what you see in your timeline, in your news feed. Um, then that uh, becomes an important ambassador for you and makes you stand out and makes people recognize the fact that it's, it's a status update from you. Okay? All right, with me so far? I can hear nodding. That's good. Good. Rattling of heads as the nodding goes on. That's fantastic. Okay. Now, what you're not allowed to put on that big cover image, that big banner, you're not allowed to put any contact information. You're not allowed to put any price information. You're not allowed to put any calls to action. You know, give us a call for, and we'll give you a free appraisal. You can't do that. Give us a call and we'll do something or other, I'll take you out to dinner or something. No, you can't do that. Facebook does not allow you to do that, nor does it allow you to, to, to um, make reference to Facebook features. Now, the, the best Facebook feature is the like. In the past, before timeline, you could have a big welcome page as your big welcome image, and you could say like, a big arrow pointing to the like button, and you could say, please like us. Can't do that anymore. So on your cover image, you can't say, please like us. Not allowed. All you can give is the factual information about your business and what your business does. No contact information, as I say, uh, no calls to action, no pricing information, and no Facebook features. But don't worry, because you can introduce those as you'll see in a minute. You can introduce that sort of information, but you can't have it on your cover image. Okay. Something else that you can do with the Facebook timeline, which is incredibly powerful, is you can highlight or star stuff, you can hide stuff, and you can pin stuff. And let me explain what each of those is in turn. Here's an example. This is, this is a, a status update that I put up on my own page. And it talks about um, oh, Facebook timeline. There's a little article about Facebook timeline. Um, and you see, it takes up half of the page. And then over this side of the page, I've got, you know, there's information that Facebook's got about how many people like me and all that sort of stuff, right? So um, it takes this side. I've hovered my mouse in the top right-hand corner of my, my, my status update, and it up pops a little box with a star and a pencil. A pencil is for edit, if I wanted to edit my post, or a star means I can highlight it, and I can highlight that particular post. What happens when you highlight the post? This happens. It spreads across the whole page. So suddenly it stands out on your timeline. Someone going to your business page in Facebook can scroll down with their mouse, they can scroll down the page, and they'll suddenly see a page, a post, I should say, a status update that you reckon is more important than the others, and you can have as many of these as, as you like. Um, and it's, it's made it a lot bigger, so it stands out a lot more. Now, I haven't got a compelling image. I've just got a little logo of Facebook. But I could have a compelling image there. Well, and remember, web is now driven by images. I could have a compelling image there that would draw people in to that particular status update, where I could be talking about a free report, or I could be talking about uh, something new that's happened in the industry, or some, you know, the implications of some new legislation or something something that's important. I can highlight it and it stands out on the page. Does that make sense? 
that that's important. Yeah? Good. I can hear rattling. Excellent. Okay. So other things that you can do. You can hide stuff. So let's say I put a status update up there. And six weeks, six months, six years later, I decide, no, I don't want that showing in my timeline anymore. I put up some information, and now that information is erroneous. I've realised I made a mistake. I don't want that up there anymore. I can hide it. I don't delete it, but I can hide it from the public. So it's always there. It's in the record, um, but it's hidden from the public. Now, some people would think you could use that hiding especially if you allow other people to post on your timeline, which I do on mine, and I recommend you do that. But some people say, oh, look, some, some nasty internet person has come along and left some rubbish comment on my page about how my service is atrocious or how they didn't like you know, one of my people or something. So they left a nasty comment. Some organisations might say, well, hide that. Hide that negative comment. Hide that nasty comment. I say, no, verily I say unto thee, no. Don't do that, because people are going to be watching you. They want to see how you react. They will know that, 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 that they will suddenly see that there was a post there disparaging uh, in some regard, and then suddenly that post is gone. So they know you've deleted it. It'll, and, and they'll talk about the fact that you've deleted something that was you know, discouraging or disparaging. Right? What they want to do is see how you handle negative feedback. How you handle negative feedback speaks volumes about how you as a business interact with your customers and clients. So if you've got the opportunity to turn a negative situation into a positive, by all means take it. Don't delete a comment, you know, unless it's, unless it's a troll, which is a rat bag. So unless someone's gone up there deliberately to, to create a nasty sort of thing, they've deliberately gone up with nastiness and a bit of venom and they've gone up there and, you know, there's no appeasing them. In that case, yeah, sure, delete, delete the comment or hide the comment. Fine, no problem. But otherwise, always keep nasty comments up there and respond to them because people are really interested to see how you respond. Yeah? Okay. So that's hiding stuff. But you can also, and this is so cool, pin stuff to the top. So let's say you've written a whole lot of posts, right? a whole lot of status updates, and you decide, now this one is particularly important. It's like, say you're giving away a free report or a free evaluation or something, right? You can pin it to the top of your timeline so that no matter what you write after it, it still stays at the top. All the other stuff feeds in underneath it in the normal timeline fashion, news feed fashion. But that post stays at the top for seven days. So that's a tremendous tool. If you've got a free report that you want to give away or you've got information that is time relevant that, and there's, there's a deadline to it, you can put it up there for seven days. You can, you, can, you can pin it to the top of your page for seven days. And then it, it slips back down into the normal timeline and things as things go over the top of it. But can you see, can you see some, some value in that? Can you, see, can you think about some ideas that go, yeah, I could use that? Yeah? I can see some heads nodding. Good. That's good. Okay. So that's, that's uh, pinning, which is fantastic. What sort of stuff can you pin to the top? What's worth pinning to the top? This sort of information. You can stick up, oh, I've got free information that I want to give away. Free, because the internet is a free society. People love stuff for free. It's very hard to get money out of people online, um, especially when you're, when you're, you're selling professional services. Um, so, so giving away free reports helps set you up as an expert. It gives people the opportunity to audit you and you audit your level of information and see whether you're of value to them or not. If they, if you, if they de determine that you are of value, they're more likely to come back to you and do more information. We all know the power of giving stuff away for free to get business back. So that's the sort of stuff that you can give away. Free information reports. You can give away free appraisals if that's what you know, your particular business model is. You can give free workshops if you're running a free workshop for, for local businesses on a particular topic. Say the government's introduced some new legislation. Well, then you can give a free workshop to the businesses in your local area. And you know, it's at your cost, but it gets them in front of you and it gets the business cars going. Uh, and you know, if that gives them an opportunity to determine whether you're of value to them or not. If you are of value to them, they're more likely to come to you and, and do more business and paid business, which is always good. And as I said before, free reports. So that's the sort of stuff that you can pin to the top that's valuable and, and to have it there. Does that make sense? Yeah? Cool. Cool. Okay. 
What you want to do with your timeline is enable messages. So, as a business, you want to enable people to be able to send you private messages. Because how it's set up as a default is that people can go to your timeline. The only way they can get a message to you is to leave it on your status update, which you don't necessarily want them to do if it's a private and personal matter. They may not necessarily want to, you know, to go to the public and say, hey, can you help me with uh, my divorce proceedings? My wife doesn't know yet. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, you know, you, what you want to do is enable um, them to send you a private message. It's very, very simple to do. What you do is at the very top of your timeline, when you go to your timeline page as the administrator, you've logged in as the administrator so you can go and do stuff to your page. Above where your status updates and everything go, there's this timeline panel, uh, this, this management panel. Um, and in there, you go up to the top, uh, to the right-hand corner, and it says edit page, and then you click on manage permissions, and you get a page like this. And down here, where it says messages, you tick in the box show message button on Lee Hopkins. That means when they go to my page on Lee Hopkins, there's not only the sort of like button, but next to it, there's a message button. So people can send me a private message if they want to. And they can privately tell me that I'm a rat bag, rather than sticking it up on my status update. Yeah? So powerful tool. You want to do that. Okay. Also, you want to think about asking them questions. And part of this new timeline thing, it was convoluted before, it's now very, very simple to do. You can ask questions of your, your fans, your people who like you, your audience. Um, and you go into a status update, where you put your status update. In fact, there's a little link there called Events Milestones Plus. And in there, you can pop in a question, and you can ask a question. For example, I've just typed this in do you like the colour purple? And I could write in answers to that. So I could put in three answers. Uh, yes um, or no, or uh, I prefer the colour blue, or I prefer the colour red or something. And you can also, as it shows, that with a little tick box, you can let them put their answers too. Because they might have better answers. You are asking a serious question rather than something flippant like, you know, do you like the colour purple? You could ask a serious question about the industry, about their business, whatever. And they may have an answer that you might not have thought of, but by ticking that box, allowing them to put answers, then you're capturing their data as well. Very important, uh, uh, very important intelligence, business intelligence. So that's a powerful thing to do. Ask questions. Okay, what else? Through this timeline, you can create loyalty. Now, loyalty is something that... Even in personal relationships, we only build up loyalty in our relationships over time. It takes time to build up a relationship. And over time, you hear the story of another person's life. So I might become friends with, with you today, right? And over time, we keep corresponding. Over time, we will build up an understanding about each other's backgrounds, about our histories, you know, about our friends, our likes, our dislikes. So I get to hear your story. That compels me, that, that draws me in, and I'm more likely to want to then, if I do business, do business with you, because I understand more about you. I've got a relationship with you. You can build that sort of relationship up through the timeline, through stories, by telling stories about your organisation, the, the journey that your organisation has been through, some of the good times, some of the bad times, some of the successes that you've had, maybe you even want to put in a failure, because everyone knows in reality that Business is not all just that big sort of success tick, uh, that success line that goes up. It's all sort of squiggly in the middle. Um, so f the timeline enables you to do that through expressing stories. And, and you can do that with milestones. Timeline has a thing called milestones. What you can do is you can go down where it says status update. There's also event milestone plus. You click on the milestone link. It takes you to a dialog box where you can put in or click on a milestone, a question as well. So like we were talking about a minute ago, you can put in a question. But you can also put in a milestone. Now, here's an example, uh, and not a very good one. I couldn't find a really good example, which is annoying, frustrating. But here's an example of a, a marketing, uh, a, a, an online uh, uh, Twitter company called uh, Hootsuite. And their logo is an owl. And so they received some venture capital funding of 20 million, 
back in the uh, end of March. And so they put, all they did was put a little logo of their owl in a, in a pinstripe suit, um, which, you know, to represent business and, and funding and everything. So they, they, they could have made so much more of it. They could have put a compelling image up there that told more of a story. It doesn't have to be a, a, an image of a tree or something like you saw earlier on. It could be a, in a, a, an image, a logo, or not a logo, sorry, a, a, a banner with uh, text written in it saying, you know, how fabulous it was that, you know, we just received uh, 20 million funding. It means that, you know, the managing director keeps his Porsche for another three months or something, you know. It's just, but something like that, something funny or, or, or whatever. But they could, they could have done a lot more with that. But at least it gives an opportunity, the, the timeline gives you an opportunity through milestones to talk about the history of your organisation and the key people in it. You know, if, if, it's very, if your culture of your organisation is very family-oriented, then you can put up there, if you're comfortable with it, you can put up there the fact that, you know, one of your members of staff has just had their first child. Or, like, for me, I've just had my first grandchild. So, you know, you can put that information up there. Uh, and it just gives people a, a, a more personal flavour about your organisation. It just helps build that relationship. And, of course, as we all know, relationships are key to business. So the timeline is, is very good. Now, you know I showed you earlier on uh, a, a financial services company based in Adelaide. They had a time, uh, they, they put in a milestone of when they were first founded. And they put no image whatsoever. It's a big waste of an opportunity. They could put something in there. And I strongly suggest that when you're going through and you're putting the milestones of the business, that you put some sort of information in with your image. You can use text in your image. You can create text. You can get, either you can do it yourself if you've got those skills or get someone to do it for you. Um, most teenagers going through high school will do some sort of, you know, Photoshop or something. Um, so, you know, you can get them to do it for you. And use that image to... Talk about and personalise your, your, your organisation. Does that make sense? I'm seeing less heads nodding. Okay. What else can you do? Apps. Now, this is, a, this, is a tricky, this is a tricky bit because they call them apps because in the old days of Facebook, you had to go do a long convoluted journey through HTML and a whole lot of jiggery-pokery, right, um, to put something up on your page. It was a long, complex process. Now it's really simple. Not so simple that I'd you know, suggest to you you go out and do it yourself. I'd suggest for the first couple you get people to help you, but it is a really much simpler process than it used to be. But they still insist on calling it apps, which is very confusing. But what apps are is... Here's an example of a marketing company. And... Um, there's, there's their logo, very simple, very plain, very clear logo. Still works even if it's down at 32 by 32 pixels, very small. Still very clearly identifies who they are. Great logo. They've got, on their, on their, this is their, their cover photo, then directly underneath they've got photos. Try HubSpot, so they've created an application, a page where if you clicked on that you'd go through to a sub-page on their business area. Uh, that talks about you know, the fact that you can try them 30-day free trial. Right? Or there's events. They've, they've got an events application as well, which comes free. With, with, you don't have to create it. It's free within Facebook. So you can type in an event, and it'll show up in that. And they've created a nice little graphic to go attend, which is you know, just a call to action. We were talking earlier on you couldn't have call to action in your cover picture, but you can have calls to action down here. And then they've got marketing ebook, which I know it's hard to read because it's back there. But it's basically, what is it? It's a how to monitor social media in 10 minutes a day. It's a free ebook. So you can click on that link, click on that app, as it's called, and go and get yourself a free copy of their report, how to monitor social media in 10 minutes a day, which I strongly suggest you do. <clears throat> they're, they're an excellent company, HubSpot. Okay, so that's one example. Here's another one. This some bloke from Adelaide. I don't know who he is, but some bloke. He's got the same sort of thing. There's photos there, but I've also got a welcome app. So people who want to know more about me can click on that welcome app and, and read more information about me and my background and my journey. And also, free resources. So I've got some white papers and things that I give away. I've, I'm, I'm highlighting it so that one of the first things that someone sees when they come to my page, they can see that I've got free resources to go, you know, that they can, they can take away. 
So that's an app. That's, that's what Facebook calls an app. I'd call it a sub-page or whatever, but Facebook calls it an app. But you can use them as I've used them, as HubSpot have used them, to, to draw attention to the fact that you've got stuff to give away for free or that there's, a, there's a, 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 an event coming up that you want people to come to. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, cool. Okay, here's, here's um, uh, Hootsuite, the, the company that got the venture capital funding. And that's their little owl. Again, a really clear logo. Really simple, works still down at a, at a tiny size. Um, photos, they've got the world's largest webinar that they, they reckon it's going to be the world's largest web, webinar. They're hosting it. So that's an app that they built. You go and click on that and you find out more information about their free webinar. Um, there's news uh, and there's feedback. And there's one other app that they've got that doesn't show up on the front page. So they're using apps to market themselves. Does that make sense? That's something you can do. And it is, it's not the easiest thing to set up, but it's a heck of a lot easier than it used to be. Um, and if you need help doing that, I'm available. You, you know, give me a call, and we can go through, and we can set something up like that for you. OK. All right. This is the sort of stuff that really works really well with those apps. Sign up for an email newsletter. You want people not just to follow you, but you want their email address as well, because then you can email market them. Now, I've heard lots of talk over the last, excuse me, <coughs> lots of talk over the last uh, three or four years about the fact that email has died. Email is dying. It's not. It is still the number one marketing method. It just works, even though people get inundated with emails every day and they hate spam. Email is still the number one. It's like direct marketing, you know, when, when direct marketing was king. Even people hated all that junk mail in their letterbox. But the reason they got so much junk mail is because it works. And it's still with email. Email still works. A compelling email, compelling subject, or you know, headline, and compelling text with a, with a great call to action still works. So you want to grab people's email address if you can. So if you have the opportunity to set up an email database, by all means, promote it through an app. Or um, register for a, a, a workshop that you're going to be running for the local businesses on this new implication from the budget or, or new implication from the new legislation. Or promote a free report that you've written. You can use it for that. So tremendous, tremendously powerful tool. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to bring this in for a bit of a landing now. Hopefully not a bumpy one. But time now is short. The internet changes things, and it's getting faster and faster. It used to be that one year on the internet was like seven years in real life. Um, if things happen so quickly. It's even faster than that now. Do you know, if you, sp if you stick up a status update, right, how many hours that status update will last? How many hours that status update is viewable? Any guesses? Close, three hours. That's all it's got, three hours. If you put a status update up at 9 o'clock in the morning and you put one up at 4 in the afternoon, it's a different audience who reads it. There's different people at different times of the day will go into Facebook and look at stuff. And, and your, your, your status update is only going to last a very short time. Now, if you are working for a large organisation rather than a small organisation, but if you're working for a large organisation that's relying on Facebook marketing... Uh, as, 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 as one of the key, key marketing channels, then you have to be aware that once a day is no longer enough. Now, that's a huge burden on a small business. So maybe once a day or once every couple of days is okay for a small business. But if you're a large organisation, no, it's not. It's not enough anymore because you're going to miss too many people. As I say, the people at 9 o'clock are not the same people at 4 o'clock. Okay, now, all of this, I've rattled through a whole lot of stuff. I've noticed you've taken lots of notes, so thank you for doing that. But if you need any help, I am available. All you need to do is contact me via one of these channels, and we'll try and get stuff sorted out. But that's the presentation. Questions. Hopefully I've engendered some questions.